Hello boys and girls, I'm Steve Strobridge and in this video I'm going to attempt to show you how to set up a Raspberry Pi 3 or Raspberry Pi 3B to become the Cocoa Pi, which is a very specific setup designed to emulate a variety of color computers, MC10, Dragon computers, and you name it. This is a project that was um, put together by Ron Klein. So I'm going to show you a couple of web pages here. There will be links in the description of this video on how to get to these web pages. This is what the Cocoa Pie 3 project download page looks like. Currently, the image that is available for download is the Cocoa Fest 2019 edition, which is from last year. Still works. Works fine. Uh, just a little bit of news for you, there is a 2020 edition that will be available soon that contains the latest, greatest version of MAME. This is what the download page looks like. What's an easy to remember way to get to this download link? Because there's three different places you can download this from. So if you go to imacoconut.com, that's I-M-A-C-O-C-O-N-U-T.com, and you click on downloads and you scroll down here a little bit, there are three links for Ron Klein's Cocoa Pie image. There's the primary link that I am hosting on my web server. There's a secondary link in the United States that's hosted by Rick Adams. And then there's a European hosting that's provided to us by Simon Jonasson. He has a very high speed uh, link to his hosting as well. So there's three different possible links you can click on from imacoconut.com slash downloads. The page will look like this. What you need to download is the link on the left hand side that says Cocoa Pie 3 image and, um, and that image is basically a zip file and what you will be doing in that zip file is you will be downloading that zip file and, and extracting it and when you extract the zip file what you will see is basically an ISO or ISO image which is basically an image of a hard drive. So um, you're going to click on this link right here to download the Cocoa Pie image. You will unzip that image to get its ISO file. And then from there, you will need to, quote unquote, burn that ISO file to an SD card. If you're running Windows, Ron Klein has included a link for a project that's called Win32 Disk Imager. And when you click on that, this is a download you can get to run that program. So download the Cocoa Pie 3 zip image, extract the image, get yourself an image burner, and then burn it to your SD card. What it looks like when you're done burning it is right here. This is my Win Disk Image Burner. I have just finished burning this to a card. Now what I will tell you is that while the image says it is a 16 gigabyte image, and it should theoretically burn to a 16 gigabyte SD card, the actual usable capacity of SD cards is very uh, speculative and, and it varies from vendor to vendor. So what the actual formatted and unformatted capacity you'll get from the SD card you use may or may not be what the image itself requires. And so uh, future editions of Cocoa Pie image downloads will be compacted a little smaller to safely fit in the container they say they're going to fit in but i actually had a, a trouble burning this to a couple of different 16 gig micro sd cards that i had today so i had to go with a 32 gig sd card so my suggestion to you is regardless of what the um, iso image file says it needs if it says it's a 16 gig image if it says it's a 32 gig image just double down and get an sd card that's twice as big as that they're cheap enough to do and you might be wondering why on earth do we even need 16 gigabytes of um, space to run a 8-bit emulation and there's a couple of reasons number one Ron Klein um, secretly works for the uh, secure digital corporation and he gets a commission on every SD card sale so he wants people to buy bigger SD cards and and uh, and more SD cards because he earns a very lucrative uh, living and lifestyle from the dozens of people who've bought this these cards so far and that's of course sarcasm but the real reason is that um, there's a ton of stuff on here there is the MAME emulator there's the XROAR emulator there are tons of image the entire color computer archive of disk and ROM pack images are on here virtual hard drive images are on here there are tons of things on the Cocoa Pie image, so it does require 
space. And, and Ron Klein is just insane, and he just puts tons of stuff on here, which, at the end of the day, is a good thing. We all win. So this is me burning the card. This is what the download page looks like. There is a link to the documentation of the Cocoa Pie, which um, is basically a Google document, and it explains the project. It talks about getting a case. I would suggest you get a uh, case for your uh, Raspberry Pi 3 or, or Raspberry Pi 3B that has a fan because Ron actually overclocks the Raspberry Pi 3 to make it run a little faster to handle Cocoa emulation well. These are some examples of some cases you get. I'm going to show you some. Um, I'm going to show you some links on Amazon of what they look like today. There's lots of information on here about all the projects. Here's crediting all of the projects and things that are included in this image and how to get to them. So there's a lot of information here in the documentation. So just to give you an idea, what is a Raspberry Pi 3? Um, uh, most people who are going to do this project probably own one or more Raspberry Pi units already, and this is just a fun thing you can do with this. But let's say you don't own a Raspberry Pi 3. What is a Raspberry Pi? Well, here's a picture of what a Raspberry Pi looks like, uh, an entire kit that you can get from Amazon. The actual Raspberry Pi is this little thing right here. It's known as a single board computer, and it runs basically like an ARM processor, which is similar to what you would find in a lot of mobile phones, like Android phones and stuff. And it's got all kinds of USB ports and HDMI ports, network tracks, it's got Wi-Fi. It's a, it's a mini computer. And you can buy the Raspberry Pi the computer board by itself for you know wherever you go between like 35 and 45 dollars for the computer but you need a case you need a power supply and um and you're going to need a micro sd card now if you know where to buy all these things individually or you have all these things not a problem if you're new to this you might just want to grab a kit this kit here is 80 dollars for everything that you need however unfortunately this kit does not include a fan. This is a generic case that has the heat sinks and is what we've known as passively cooled, but it's not actively cooled with a fan. So you might want to piece out a separate case that has a fan. It may or may not run fine without overheating, but I would strongly suggest you do invest in getting a fan for your case. And so just to give you an example of what I just recently purchased for mine, I've had my Pi 3 for a couple of years now. I just bought this case here that has a five volt fan and heat sinks to put on all the important chips to keep it cool. This case was about $17. So if you ever buy both of these things, 80 and 17, you're looking at $9,800 for a whole kit. Now, that being said, uh, right now, the only image for the Cocoa Pi is running on Raspberry Pi 3 and Raspberry Pi 3B. Very soon, hopefully within 30 days, let's just say tentatively by the end of June in the year of 2020, there will be a Raspberry Pi 4 image. Raspberry Pi 4 is the next generation of the Raspberry Pi, and it's a bigger, stronger, faster, better Raspberry Pi. So if you were looking at spending $100 right now today, and you did not own a Raspberry Pi, and you were gonna make this investment, I, might, I want you to be aware that there is a better Pi on the market, and there will be a better version of the Cocoa Pi project for the Raspberry Pi 4 available to the public very soon. And just to get an idea of what that kit looks like and what that kit costs, here's again one on Amazon for $80 for the Raspberry Pi 4. And this is the fully loaded Raspberry Pi 4 that has four gigabytes of memory. Four gigabytes! Great, Scott! It has a fan. It has the heat sinks. It has the power supply with the on-off switch. It's got an aluminum case. Um, but actually, this one is missing the SD card. So as, as well, as good as this is for $80, you now need to buy an SD card. And you can get SD cards at Walmart or you can get them on Amazon. And so I would recommend if you're going to buy an SD card, though, go big and get at least a 64 gigabyte SD card to future-proof updates to this because I'm sure Ron Klein will continue to add more things to this image to drive up sales of SD cards and drive up his commission so he can continue to enjoy that luxurious lifestyle that he currently has thanks to us buying these cards. So there we have the the download page you can get to by going to imacoconut.com slash downloads. This is what the page looks like. This is the zip file you will get to download and extract to an ISO file. You will burn that ISO file to an SD card. This is the documentation. This is an example of where you can find some Raspberry Pis on Amazon. You might have your own sources and own, your own favorite places to shop online. This is what it looks like to burn the SD card. I went ahead and burned 
the 16 gigabyte image to a 32 gigabyte SD card, that damage is done. I'm gonna go ahead now and eject that from my computer. And now let's go ahead and boot up the Coco Pi with this image that I just downloaded. And there's just a few things that you're gonna need to do to um, make this thing work. So number one, let me just slide in my SD card into my Coco Pi 3. I'm gonna flip the switch to turn it on, and then it should be booting up here right now, toot sweet. Okay, and here we go. So we are now booting up the Raspberry Pi 3 with my, um, with my Coco Pi 3 image that I just downloaded and I just burned to the SD card. Now, the other thing you will need for your Raspberry Pi is going to be, at bare minimum, a keyboard. And then secondly, if you wanna use your Raspberry Pi to play games, which is what I would wanna do, you're gonna need a joystick. Now, the Raspberry Pi has multiple USB ports and also has Bluetooth. So you could pair Bluetooth keyboards, you could pair um, USB keyboards or pair Bluetooth keyboards. What I've, got, what I've gone ahead and done is I just have this guy here. This is a Logitech wireless keyboard mouse with trackpad combo. It's got a little USB receiver fob thingy that you stick in. And I'm just using that for, um, for the menu. Now, when you first boot it up, this is what the menu looks like. It says, welcome to Cocoa Pie 3. This is the Cocoa Fest 2019 edition. I'm now running Cocoa Pie and it is menu driven. It's pretty user friendly. There's just a few things you need to do before you can actually run your cocoa. So the image that you burned is compressed and it needs to be expanded to take up the rest of the available space on your SD card. So from the utilities menu, which is number four, we are gonna scroll down and we are gonna look for the option that is going to um, expand our file system. And that is right now menu option 31 run raspy config script so we're going to choose that this utility can damage your computer warning danger will robinson okay we want to go to advanced options number seven and we want to expand our file systems which is advanced option a1 i'm going to go ahead and hit enter it's basically saying your partition has been resized you now basically need to reboot i'm going to hit okay and then we would go ahead and tab down and hit finish. And then this should, at this point, force a reboot on me. I'm gonna go ahead and hit enter for yes. This is gonna reboot my Raspberry Pi. And now my Raspberry Pi will be using all of the available space on the SD card. Once we boot it up, there's one more thing that we need to do. And that is we need to download the MAME color computer ROMs. The Raspberry Pi image is not shipped with the color computer ROMs and this is to respect MAME's uh, request that the emulator always be uh, distributed without anything that's potentially copywritten. So we do not have the Coco 3 ROMs copied into the MAME directory but that can be done from the utilities menu. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the utilities menu and here it is. So that is menu option number 38. This is a really, really short menu of things. <laughs> I'm kidding. There's a million things that are built into this menu option. This is some back end stuff you won't have to mess with all the time. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter there. It's now saying this script will download all of the necessary ROM files for your Cocoa Pie. I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. It's now downloading all of the ROMs and it's copied them to the folder. They should now work. Now, the last thing you may or may not want to do is right now my Raspberry Pi is plugged in with an actual physical network cable. It's on my hardwired network. If you want to get your Raspberry Pi 3 on your Wi-Fi, menu option 28 is your Wi-Fi configuration. When I hit enter here, this is going to open up a text file, and this is where inside quotes you would put in what your... Um, what your network name is and then you would put in what the password is you would go ahead and hit um, control X to exit the editor it's going to say do you want to save you'll hit yes it's going to ask you what the file name is just hit enter to leave the default that will update the Wi-Fi config in the Raspberry Pi so the next time it boots it will boot onto your Wi-Fi 
So that's a pretty simple process there, which I will skip. Okay, so now that we have downloaded the MAME ROM images, there's two other, it's a simple two-step manual process just to fix uh, two more things that were discovered after this image was created a year ago and there was a readme file explaining how to fix a few things. So the first option that I showed you boys and girls was the option to download um, the main ROMs, right? So download ROM images. So we've done that. Now we need to do two more things. We are going to clear all mounts. And again, this is um, this is just a kind of a cleanup that needs to be done. Newer images that will come out, you won't have to worry about this. So we're going to clear all saved mounts. Okay. Once we've cleared all mounts, there is one final, final thing that we need to do, which is to make a change to a global MAME configuration file, which is all done through this menu, so it's not that hard. Don't get scared. Uh, optional MAME parameters, caution. This is menu option 27. I'm going to hit enter here. It's warning me that, listen, you can really screw the pooch if you do this, so I'm going to hit enter for OK. But the thing we need to get rid of is this option here that says no throttle. Because what this does is this is allowing the, uh, the virtually emulated color computers to run as fast as they can physically run on the real hardware. So um, your Coco 3's cursor would be blinking so fast it would probably give you a seizure. So uh, now on the one hand, when you're doing something like Nitrous 9 or Fuzix or some of these operating systems, you might really want that. But for accurate color computer two, one, two, and three emulations, you want to turn this off. So I'm going to backspace and get rid of all of that no throttle stuff. I'm going to hit control X to save it, saying, are you sure you want to save? Y for yes. It's asking me what file name do you want to use? We're going to leave that file alone. I'm going to hit enter. It has now been done. And now I can basically get back. So I'm going to go ahead and page down to the end, return to main menu. And now we are in the normal menu. We've done two or three things that are one-time setups to configure the Raspberry Pi back-end wise. Now we can really just use our Coco on the front end. And it's a real simple menu right now. We can run Color Computer 2 systems, we can run Color Computer 3 systems, or we can run a Color Computer 3 with Nitrous 9 ease of use beta. However, you will also have to go to your utilities menu to download that off of the internets. So let's go ahead and try to pull up a Coco 2 and just show you how quickly and how easily this is. When I hit enter, it's saying, all right, are you ready to run a Color Computer 2 with standard disk extended color basic? OK, I'm going to hit enter and boom. There it is. There's my Coco. I'm in a Coco 2. I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape to get out. And now we're back at the main menu. If I want to fire up a Coco 3, I'm going to hit Enter. Do you want to do this? Of course I do. Let's hit Enter. And then boom, here I am. I'm in a Coco 3. Disk Extended Basic 2.1. I can hit Escape to get out of here. I'm back at the menu. There's also an attract mode, which is a pretty cool feature. It will just run a color computer too. It will cycle through random cartridges about every two minutes and just and just do them. Um, the last thing I want to show you is how to properly reboot and how to properly shut down your Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, again, this system was set up to be as user friendly as possible. So you don't have to really know how to use the Linux operating system. You don't have to be fluent in command line instructions or uh, scripting or anything else you can do it all from your menu but this is a Linux based operating system and it does need to be shut down properly and gracefully to avoid um, corruption to the file system and screwing up your SD card so we're gonna go ahead and pull up our utilities menu we're gonna go pretty much all the way down to the end of the of the utilities menu and the last two options are to either reboot the Pi or to shut down the Pi so I'm going to go ahead and just do a quick reboot just to show you what the process should look like from, from this day forward. Now that I've done those handful of steps like expanding the file system, downloading the ROMs, clearing out the mounts, and turning off the um, no throttle, from this day forward when I boot up my Cocoa Pi 3, this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to see the initial bootloader screen that's happening now. This is as the actual Linux operating system is loading. And once this operating system has loaded, we're going to be at an extremely user-friendly menu 
that will let us pull up a color computer 2 or a color computer 3 um, that are basically running in the MAME emulator. So when I hit OK, I'm in a Coco 2. And I can now load disk images, I can load um, cartridges, I can do things that will have to be done through the user interface menu, which is something we can cover at a later time. But an attempt to show you a fairly quick and easy way to get Cocoa Pie 3 up and running and booting up a Cocoa 2 or Cocoa 3 up and running hopefully has been achieved in this video. And so, um, you know, there are a lot of people right now who are new to the Facebook group. People are coming into the community right now who are maybe not aware of a variety of the projects. And obviously it would be great if we could all get our hands on real color computer twos and real color computer threes and, and get that tangible physical hardware. And, and, and I'm not saying that you shouldn't still pursue that if that's your interest and your hobby to collect this, but there's a lot of people who would like to run a Coco who don't necessarily have the money or the time or more importantly, the space to set these things up. So, and there are other people too who are like, oh, I'd like to run an emulator but setting up the emulator can be confusing and challenging and intimidating. And um, this is a system that you can boot up to now from a menu. All the emulators are here for us. All of the backend ROMs are here for us. And there's even a ton of software. So just real quickly, just to give you an example, if I was to boot up my Cocoa Pie 2, uh, my Cocoa 2 emulation, and I hit the tab key to bring up the menu, I can go to the file manager and then I can choose from uh, cartridges. I can choose from floppy disk and, and possibly even hard drives. And so like, let's say I go to choose a cartridge right now. This is another beautiful thing that Ron Klein has put into this Cocoa Pie image. If I go to software list right now, I have a few choices, but the one here that says Tandy Radio Shack Color Computer Cartridges and I just hit enter, guess what? Every color computer cartridge that is on the color computer archive is available and is able to be um, played so I can now just highlight Dagrath and hit enter and I have now just booted my color computer into the um, Dungeons of Dagrath ROM cartridge so the ability to not only um, fire up an emulator which is great. The uh, barrier to entry there and getting MAME set up and getting your emulation Coco set up is pretty much done for you. But having access to software, the software that's on the Color Computer Archive is already part of the image. So all of the cartridges that are there and all of the disk images that are there are available from this file menu. So if I go back into the file manager and I will go ahead and just take this cartridge and empty it out. And now I want to go ahead and um, and let me go ahead and reset the Coco because I have a feeling I just got rid of my disk controller. If I go to File Manager, now I can go to Floppy Disk, for example, hit Enter, go to Software List, choose Radio Shack Disk Images, hit Enter, and now all of the various disk images that are available on the Color Computer Archive are also here. So if I was just to pull up something from at random here, like Balloon Fire by Terry Steen, man famously known for killing couches on his way to Cocoa Fest, I've now just put the Balloon Fire disc in my floppy drive. If I hit tab to get out of here and I type in dir, well, what we're going to see here is there's Balloon Fire. And if I do the old load M Balloon Fire, it's going to load that. And then if I hit exec, it's going to execute the file and it's going to run it. Now, I'm not sure if this was supposed to be red or blue. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And now it's pulling this up. Now, I'm not hearing sound right now, and I just don't know if that's because I'm not capturing sound properly through my um, USB capture device. But this is balloon fire. And, and, and so here it is. Press any key, and then here we go. Of course, this is expecting a joystick to fire. Now, let's say that this game needed to have its colors reversed, and that screen that was blue needed to be red. If you go into the previous menu, it's under machine configuration. Okay, so it's here. Under the main menu, we would want to go to machine configuration. So where is that at? Um, when I go to bring up my pop-up menu with tab, and I go to machine configuration, under artifacting down here, 
this is where I can switch it between standard reverse. So if the red and blue are wrong, I can reverse that. Right? I'll go, I'll go, I can turn artifacting off, for example. And now I have true RGB. I can turn artifacting on standard. Now blue is blue. If I do reverse, now red is blue, right? So by going into your menu and going into machine configurations, um, you can change your artifact options. So this is a way to change the red and blue without having to press the reset button 400 times, right? There you go. We're done. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to set up the Co Coco Pi 3 image to make a Raspberry Pi 3 become a really versatile and easy to use color computer emulator. Stay tuned for a follow up video coming later today that's going to show you some stuff that I've been doing on uh, turning the, co the color computer 3 um, Pi system into what I call a Coco game console where I'm going to do some really cool stuff to show you how to use a like a USB style or wireless uh, game controller and map all the buttons of that game controller to not only allow you to use a joystick within your color computer to play color computer games but also to use a joystick to pull up all of your interface menus so you can sit on your couch and use your wireless gamepad to um, pull up disk images or, or ROM images of cartridges in your Coco and play your games all from the comfort of your armchair and a couple of buttons on an Xbox gamepad or something like that. So that video will be coming in a little bit, but the whole purpose of this video was to show you how quick and easy it is to get the Raspberry Pi single board computer set up to become the Coco Pi 3 system. And now I'm going to do my good boy diligence here. I'm going to go to my um, utilities menu and I'm going to shut down my Raspberry Pi properly. And this is what that process looks like. And then boom, the Raspberry Pi has been turned off. And this is the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you'll get something out of it. If you have more questions, feel free to hit us up on the Coco Discord server where we have a Raspberry Pi channel and you can ask questions to Ron Klein who is the um, primary person who's working on this project and many other people who are using the Raspberry Pi uh, for the Coco and in, in, in kind of share in, uh, knowledge and ask questions from the community on this. So thanks for watching. Enjoy your Coco Pi and we'll see you next time. Take care everybody. Bye bye.